I'm Leo Wardot for Kit Guru, and this case here is the Thermal Take Suppressor F51. I've also got a Water 3.0 Ultimate Liquid Cooling System from Thermal Take, and over here I've got a tabletop of other bits and pieces to do with cooling. Uh, let me give you a quick tour of this case. I'm going to be a bit cautious at first because its feet are very widely spaced and it only just sits on my turntable, so if it drops off I'll have to do some catching. It's an ATX tower that supports an E-ATX motherboard up to 12 inch per 13 inch, so not those whacking great big workstation boards, but a large board. Uh, and as you can see, it is one of those sealed and quiet designs. On the top we've got a magnetic dust filter, but underneath, although there's lots of holes in the top, it's actually solid. There are panels that seal it off, which at first flush doesn't make a lot of sense because why do you need an air filter when you've got no openings? We'll come to that. Let me take off this side panel here, two thumb screws, swing it out. Once I've got the second thumb screw away, there we go, it swings away. It's heavy. It's being a bit cautious there, it weighs a lot. There's a lot of bitumen sound deadening material on this panel. It's a plain steel panel, very heavy as a result, uh, quiet, quiet. It's a little bit flexy, but that panel really is um, deadened by this. And then we've got some sort of vents up the front which engage with these slots in the side. We'll come to that in just a moment. And then the same again on this side. Again, swing the panel outwards, take it away. Um, right, so again, bitumen uh, sound deadening, and here we have uh, an insert. And there, as you can see, we have a magnetic filter and it's sealed off. So you can remove the filter, remove these screws, take out the panel, whack in a fan should you wish. And that is the key to this case. It's that these panels are removable. So. By default, the case is a quiet model that's not exactly sealed because at the front you've got these slots that allow air to flow through, um, but the sides are solid, the top is solid. Uh, let me just open the door at the front, see if I can do that without the thing dropping in my lap. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. And again, with the magnetically retained door, it uh, hinges on one side only, you can't reverse the door. You'll see you've got two optical drive bays, and oh look, it's solid. Uh, if I can just pull out this panel below, and this is something I've not actually seen before. We've got um, a sort of a, a mesh dust filter, and then behind it, we have another dust filter. Uh, the idea is that stuff that comes in through the front door gets captured by this filter and air that flows through these side vents gets captured by the rear filter. There is a huge emphasis with this case on filtration, which I like. If you cast your mind back to the fractal design Define R5 and then the Define S, cases that I liked a great deal, the thing I kicked up most about the design, uh, the Define F, S rather, was that the top of the case was open um, and had it had uh, a filter in the top I would have been a very happy man. Now it is crystal clear that Thermal Take uh, has taken a long hard look at what Fractal Design has done and they've worked on, uh, on the features that we saw with Fractal Design and then they've enhanced them. Uh, it's, it's strange to see an evolution of a case by one manufacturer uh, evolved by another manufacturer, but that I would say is precisely what we're looking at here. Anyway, simple pull to remove the uh, front door, two optical drive blanks come off with it, uh, and as I say, I've already taken out that front filter. Put this down here. And what you now see is the other air filter. Let me just remove that. Two little triggers and away it comes. Build quality is pretty good. The basic steel chassis is nothing special. It's a fundamentally a riveted design. Um, it feels solid enough. It doesn't feel luxurious and gorgeous. You haven't got a glossy painted finish as you have, for example, inside an NZXT case uh, or certain NZXTs um, or indeed Fantex. You definitely get the feeling that you're pulling off the well, the exterior is plastic and steel, so it's not like luxury bling and then inside you have the basic stuff. That isn't true. But you definitely feel that once you strip down to the bare chassis, um, 
there's nothing uh, thrilling about the quality of the case, but it is solidly put together uh, and the bits and pieces do come off easily enough. But the steel, for example, here, it, it's thin. Having said that, it doesn't need to be thick. What the heck, why not? Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that the I.O. panel uh, remains with the chassis, so you pull the front panel off easy peasy, uh, revealing your two optical drive bays and your drive towers, uh, but you don't have to wrestle with any cabling. Good, like that, like that a lot. So at the front we have this 200mm fan, at the rear we have a 120. Now obviously you can replace these fans with liquid coolers, that's standard practice, but that is only scratching at the surface. Let me first uh, turn to the drive towers. We've got three uh, bays per uh, tower or caddy, three caddies per tower even, three and three, they're separate. If I just uh, unlatch that, and you can see they're the standard two or three for three and a half, or you can screw a two and a half in place. That's fine. Interestingly, if we turn here, you can actually clip two of these caddies in place. Uh, this, this looks like it's sort of one of the trends that we're seeing. Um, we, we've had this a couple of times now. It simply clips on like so and sits in place. Um, and what that means is that if I take this other caddy out and put that also on like so, you do have to line it up a little carefully and then it kind of just rests in place. But when we have, I might have to just give up the whole peril of live video. Right, I'm gonna give up on that one. Um, what it means is that we can put two drives on the back and then it means that we can lose these drive towers. And that's significant because Thermal take claims that you can put basically any cooling you like in this case. You can put it in the top of the uh, case, you can put up to a 420 radiator and the same is true at the front. Now clearly you have this huge fan at the front but the top at the moment is uh, empty and available for business. So how can you possibly put a socking great big radiator in the roof of a case that has optical drive bays and also is sealed and solid? There's two, um, two aspects to this. The first one is that the optical drive bays come out. So let me just show you how that's done. It's four screws per bay, and then you'll see that the actual bay is little more than a piece of folded steel. Um, in the photos on uh, KitGuru's webpage, uh, I've uh, dismantled this case, and you can see the uh, effect it has when you take out all the innards. Uh, it, completely opens it up. It really is very fractal design define S, quite remarkably so, even though I would have to assume this case has been in development um, uh, before the S came to market. So here we have one of the optical drive bays removed. It's exactly the same process for the other. It's just four screws at the front. And the interesting thing here is that in addition to taking five and a quarter drivers is obvious, uh, in addition, you've also got a series of holes, which means that you can, if you choose, mount a three and a half inch hard drive in that bay, or you can mount two, two and a halves. So what this means is you can hang these caddies, one, two there, two drives, and you can, using the five and a quarter bays, should you choose, add, well, up to another four two and a half SSDs or laptop drives, or two full size hard drives. So you can very easily mount four full size drives should you choose. Which means, of course, that these towers here suddenly become pretty much redundant. Now, personally, I would be very happy if uh, Thermaltake had simply not bothered with these um, uh, towers, which is, of course, exactly what Fractal did with the, uh, with the S. But there are going to be plenty of people who aren't interested in installing a huge amount of uh, liquid cooling, and those people will want the conventional tower, simply slide out the caddy, bung in a drive, put it home. You know, you, you don't want to have to necessarily go to town building your system. But I'm just taking out these four thumb screws on the back of the towers. And I'm gonna swing around to this side and the other four screws are here. So this is one of those, you want to do this before you build the system. It so happens that the four screws inside the case were also rather tight. I had to give them some severe welly to get them out in the first case. I don't know if that means that uh, 
there's paint in the threads or what it means, but it wasn't particularly easy. Right, so that uh, tower there is keys to the lower tower and it slides out. And then let's do the same with the bottom tower and we're pretty much done with the dismantling at this stage. And then I'm going to show you, oh no, we still got to do the top covers, haven't we? Right, now the lower tower is about yay far off the deck of the uh, case, uh, which means if you just simply undo the screws, it drops. Um, now that isn't, a couple of the thumb screws, that isn't my favoured um, method of construction, but it does mean that air can flow along the entire length of the bottom. You haven't got a tower sat there blocking off a chunk of it. So in that sense, good news. We've got an air filter for the front of the case, and we've got an air filter for the rear. Split air filters I like a great deal. Uh, who needs one huge great filter covering the entire length of the case? Plus it's considerably easier to pull out two small filters when the case is under your desk or wherever. Um, if you have to go around the back of a PC and pull out a filter that length, uh, that, that's awkward. So thermal tape, good work. Now, so far there has been absolutely nothing about this case whatsoever that I don't like. Um, the build quality of the steel work is possibly, possibly a little on the flimsy side, uh, but the case itself is solid, uh, all the threads are right and proper, and overall, I'm a very happy man. Um, let's just, oh by the way, on the I.O. panel I should have mentioned, um, there's a switch there which also handles fan control. Uh, right, let's just take out the second five and a quarter bay. Or indeed, uh, as we're going to have to call it, it's like a multifunction drive caddy. I mean, it's far more than the five and a quarter drive bay. And put that down there. So, what we now have is a case that is pretty much entirely open at the front. The 200 fan mounts on four screws, as you'd expect. Take out the four screws. As you can see, the entire front of the case is now open. Uh, the drive towers have gone. The five and a quarters have gone. Uh, right now, the only drive bays in the thing are hanging two of the caddies on the back here, which gives us two drives. Should you want more, you're putting um, a, a, ca uh, a caddy back in the front. Uh, I'm just trying to remember whether or not there is a mount on the, there isn't a mount on the back of the motherboard tray. Um, that's about the only thing that would make it slightly easier is if you could actually hang another SSD or some such here, but no. So your drives go here or here or indeed in the tower. But now we've got the entire front open, the top is sealed. Once again we go inside with the screwdriver, uh, take off that filter and screws on the top. And it's four screws. Now, this is reminiscent of um, Fractal's Moduvent system, which is a kind of uh, panels that clip in place to seal off the roof of the case. Moduvent works. Um, it's a little bit aggravating in that the, the three panels have to go in a particular order because two of them are one shape and one's a different shape and they're clipping in sequence almost like the, the scales on the back of an armadillo. Uh, it works, it seals it off, they're quite thin and it, it never feels entirely solid to me. It's also the sort of thing because you're only going to open or close the top of your case once in a blue moon it seems a bit unnecessary to have the option of doing it kind of quick clip thing. This is slightly more involved in the sense it's got four screws but again you're only going to do it once in a blue moon so what does it matter? Now, there are three panels, one, two, three. Each of them is different. On the other hand, each of them is marked, so rear, middle, front, and you've got an arrow with the direction of the thing. So they've thought through the obvious pitfall, which is, well, where the heck do these bits and pieces go? When you take out the three panels in the roof, the entire top of the case is now open. So we've gone from having a case that's basically entirely sealed to a case that is now an open frame. Again, very reminiscent of the Fractal Define S. So, this case is £85. They're making the point with this system that you can install any liquid cooling you wish. 
it so happens, and this was a bit of a revelation to me, that Thermaltake has been really making a push into liquid cooling. So over here, we have this Water 3.0 Ultimate System. It's an Ace Tech, it's a 360, so 3120, um, and the Ultimate refers to how thick the radiator is and the types of fans that are supplied. That liquid cooler from uh, Thermaltake, 139 pounds, which for a 360 design is absolutely mainstream. Uh, and it's good in the sense that, oh look, they're supplying the kit you need. They're not saying go to someone else. And they also do smaller 121 uh, and 240 versions. So you can bung in a Thermaltake 360 cooler in your Thermaltake case, and that's fine. However, oh look, it can accommodate up to 420. Indeed, it can accommodate, well, not two before 420, either 420 front, 420 top, or I would say um, a 420 and a 360 if you squeak it. The precise clearance you have depends on your motherboard, but also the thickness of the radiators that you use. You've got about 50 mil clearance above the motherboard um, for your radiator. So if you don't go insane, and obviously the Ace Tech uh, radiators are quite slender, you're absolutely laughing. So the easy default option is leave your standard 200 fan in the front, leave your fan in the back, bung in a liquid cooler in the roof, you're good. There are a huge array of holes and slots in the roof. You can mount your cooler anywhere you want. It's absolutely great. Um, this business of having just a handful of holes and you have to go where the manufacturer wants, this, it, dead, it just kills it. It's dead and buried. Um, if I see it in another case, I'm going to be absolutely disgusted. So, all-in-one Ace Tech liquid cooler, fine. But what about the 420 mil option? This is where things get particularly interesting. Because Thermaltake has also made, well, it's various screws and things dropping, has made a move into the um, custom loop uh, side of things. Now this here is their Pacific 240 system, specifically the Pacific RL240 water cooling kit, uh, which is a bit on the pricey end of the scale. It's £295, but it gives you everything you need to uh, build a liquid cooling uh, loop from scratch, including a CPU block, whole bunch of hoses and connectors and such like, a really chunky 240 radiator, uh, that's their Pacific RL 240, and a combined pump reservoir unit. Now this fella here, uh, I've put the mounts on it, but I haven't bothered putting on the clippy things that support the uh, upright column, basically will go there. You'll notice that the floor of the case is absolutely littered with holes. It's more holes than anything else, which is why those filters in the bottom are so important. But we can just put that like so, and there you go. So now our um, uh, reservoir pump is behind the uh, case fan. We've still got all the space in the roof for doing whatever we want, including mounting an all-in-one if we choose to for our GPU, or indeed you can obviously extend your loop to include the GPU. Options galore, and you will agree that there is a colossal amount of space. But the 420 aspect, well, this rather expensive uh, but rather pretty kit contains a 240. But here we go. We have the Pacific RL420 radiator from Thermaltake. Now, this is new. Um, they do an array of radiators, but this enormously thick 420 radiator is so new, I haven't actually yet seen it on sale in the UK. Um, judging by the pricing of their smaller radiators, my guess is that's going to be £900. I would hope £99 because that sounds a bit better, but in that territory. So potentially you're buying your um, 240 kit and you're substituting out uh, the 240 radiator and you're bunging in uh, this RL420. Or of course you have your own liquid cooling kit and you choose to use their radiator. The point here is this case supports 420, the photos show it, and there you go. And you even have a bit of latitude about the precise location of the radiator. And we go to the front. Now, I've left the fan in place, obviously, for the moment, just for convenience. But again, in it goes. Loads of clearance. And that is a huge radiator. So the options here are legion. You start with a really quiet case, completely sealed, and you end up with this empty box into which you can pack all the toys in your toy chest. Uh, this is uh, genuinely a thrilling piece of hardware. Building a system into the Thermaltake F51 is pretty straightforward. There's a lot of space. It's a big case. And as you can see, we don't have to worry about a window showing off any sort of nasty cabling or any such. 
Uh, from the outside, in actual fact, you can't tell this is a built PC. If I just pull off the two side panels so you can see the finished result, there's the left panel with the cabling at the back. And as you can see, I've decided to put a data drive and an SSD in two of the caddies hanging on the back of the board. Um, putting them there is, be uh, the reason I've done that is because I've removed the drive towers. Now, truth be told, that was not strictly necessary. It was just really one of those, let's do it so I can do it things. As you can see on this side, because I've gone for a 360 mil uh, thermal tape liquid cooler atop the water 3.0 and just space at the front. Uh, there is a huge cavernous yawning amount of space. I've left the two five and a quarter bays in place and I put an optical drive in the front like so. Um, I'm struggling to think when I last used an optical drive. It seems to be about one build in five these days. So we have a huge amount of space Putting the motherboard, power supply, graphics card, and cooler in were all simple enough. One uh, point to note about the 360mm cooler, let me just pull off the magnetic filter actually just so you can maybe see what's going on the top with the mounts, um, is that I actually had to put the cooler with the hoses bending at the back rather than the front uh, because the radiator is so long that actually I was limited by the position of the um, uh, of the radiator. If I had it the other way around, it wouldn't actually stretch to allow me to put the CPU cooler on. So that uh, radiator actually has uh, quite short hoses. Um, not the end of the world, and it works perfectly nicely as it is, but you'd think you might have the option of going either that way or that way, but you don't. Anyway, pulling out the drive towers opens up the front entirely. Plenty of airflow from the 200 fan. Uh, optical drive bays there. I toyed with the idea of sticking a hard drive in one of those bays just to show enough really lost interest because it's quite neat and tidy putting um, the drive in the caddy on the back. One thing I will say however is that doing it that way, uh, routing power cables and SATA cables to those two drives, a little bit more awkward than you might expect. You kind of have the uh, option it looks like of having the drive either with the connectors up or down. In actual fact it doesn't really work quite like that. You, you pretty much have to go with the way it says to go and then uh, routing the cables, slightly more awkward than I expected, feeding them through those caddies and so on. It, it was um, almost as though someone had thought about the big bits, which is where are we going to put the uh, caddies, how we're going to attach them, so on and so forth, and then they kind of forgotten about the little details. On the subject of little details, I was really surprised when I turned the system on and the uh, power button on the top uh, lit up with blue and that was all nice and I pressed it and the thing kind of tipped and I thought at first it had locked and broken. Um, in actual fact, it continued to sort of rock like that. Uh, I cannot believe for a second that's intentional. I'm going to put that down as just one of those things. Um, had it been my own uh, case I'd just bought, I would have certainly wanted that to be fixed. And shipping a case back to have a button change is a bit boring. Perhaps they'd send a replacement I.O. panel. Um, that would make life a lot easier. Installing that would be a doddle. But uh, surprised. And I'm trying to think when I last had a case where actually something broke like that. Um, admittedly, I had an NZXT recently with a cable that fell out of a, a lighting system. But an actual button that goes, oh dear, um, not good. Uh, put it down as just one of those things. I don't think it's indicative of um, thermal takes uh, engineering in the slightest. Um, I will say, however, it's a funny I almost wasn't entirely surprised. As I said before, when you pull the case apart, it's all fine. Everything's fine. It's solid. It's this, it's that. But it all feels like it's built to a certain standard. It's built to be good enough. It's not built for quality. It's just it does a job, which is actually the definition of proper engineering. You engineer the thing to do a job and no more. But um, in this instance, that button didn't quite make the grade. So cabling, it's all okay. Uh, I was surprised how few of these um, tie down points there were. We got uh, one, two, I think I've accounted about six in total. There's a couple up here, a couple there. There are um, grommeted holes for cable management, which is fine. Could have done with a few more. There's an enormous cutout on the motherboard tray for the back of the CPU cooler. That all works absolutely fine. Um, this here, this is sort of sums it up. There's a slot that goes across the top of the motherboard. You can route your EPS connector easily enough, but it kind of feels like you're putting the cable in a place that isn't actually intended for the purpose. If it was an oval hole with a grommet, I know it's the right place. This is kind of, oh, this will do. Uh, it works, it's fine, uh, but it didn't quite feel quite correct. A bit silly of me perhaps, but there we have it. 
Uh, airflow, well obviously it's an enormous open space, the huge fan at the front and the fan at the rear, they flow plenty of air, no problems whatsoever with the 360 radiator at the top and three 120 fans. Uh, I think I noted at full speed they're running about 1800 RPM. Um, the bias can clock those down to 1000 or 1200 if you go to slower settings. So that's all absolutely fine. Uh, slightly disappointed that the cooler wasn't um, didn't have uh, monitoring software uh, as we're used to seeing now with NZXT and Corsair to name but two. And I'm sure there are others that are slipping my mind. Um, uh, the link software and cam respectively they they work well and i'm now expecting uh not maybe not budget 50 pound uh, all in ones but when you get to proper systems i'm expecting now a bit more control over it i want to see a usb connection this does not have that it's kind of generic ace tech uh works well enough just it's not got that luxurious thing about it so overall very impressed by this case. Uh, the cable management is not brilliant, but the case is so large that there's enough space. The, the routing cables to the back of the drives, I wasn't best impressed by that. The lack of a power supply cover is something I mentioned before with the, um, with the fractal design cases on which this is clearly, um, well, based would be perhaps a trifle harsh, but it's certainly taking cues from those. And I wasn't clear uh, with the fractals whether it would be a better or worse case if it had a power supply cover. I think I'd like the option. Um, they can't cost a massive amount of money to make. Uh, I noted, by the way, when I was installing the system that the uh, power supply it sits on a kind of a, a rubberized rest here. It slides. It basically keeps the power supply just that far off the deck of the case. And that, I'm sure, is all to do with filtration and airflow. That bar, you kind of have to move it um, to line up with where your power supply is going to sit, which means you have to adjust it. The screws are horribly tight. It felt that the threads weren't quite right. So my guess would be after the threads were made, the case was then painted, and I suspect there was paint in there. Um, slightly unusual. Once you've done it once, on the other hand, you're never going to do it again, so that's not a problem. But that, that was a slightly bitty thing. Um, so one or two little little niggles, certainly not problems. That that would be way over the top to call them that. Um, overall, happy, not ecstatic. Uh, the fractal design define S. I finished up with it just going yay, um, and I think that was possibly because it was a purpose purposeful case. It was an open box, clearly intended for airflow, and uh, it was just aimed at a certain sector of the market. You're gonna liquid cool your case, there you go. This case is much more general purpose, and in that sense, it's actually a better case. The Suppressor F51, uh, it starts off as a really quiet case with a big fan at the front, a decent fan at the rear, you bung in your stuff, it's good. The fact you haven't got a window, that's fine. Um, plenty of people don't care what the inside of the case looks like, and that, of course, helps you from the point of view of uh, cabling and so on, because you haven't got to worry about the finer details. The thing is, you can then pull out the innards and you end up with this hugely open design. Now, I have to say, with the top open, uh, there's a lot of airflow. If you whack up the fan speeds, it does get quite noisy a bit over the top. But essentially, you know, the radiators are only here, the fans are there, boom, it's the open air. Um, on the plus side, it's filtered, so can't really complain. So you do have... A quiet case, air cooled, and then you can move on to liquid cooled, you can move on to serious liquid cooled. This is a general purpose case and it works well. The build quality and the engineering quality are adequate without being superb. And the £85 price tag uh, strikes me as being entirely reasonable, whereas the fractal design, um, the S, was cheap. I mean, it just looked like, oh my God, that's cheap. But then they didn't put as much in the case. In this instance, you've got stuff, you can take it out or you can leave it in. So I can understand the extra money. Besides, you're very likely to be spending a bunch of cash on your cooling. As I said, the Water 3.0 Ultimate, 139 pounds. That Pacific RL240 kit, 295 pounds. Huge, great 420 radiator if you choose that. That's another 100 pounds. So you could be spending 400 pounds on a custom loop. 139 on a huge all-in-one, or of course less on an all-in-one. Um, all depends. In that respect, the £85 price tag for the case is not a detail exactly, but it's certainly not the end of the world, not by a long chalk. So, overall, 
Thermal Take Suppressor F51 case, I like it. I like the understated looks. The engineering is okay. The ideas behind it, very good indeed. Features I like. Small things like the cabling running down here to um, these drive bays. There, there's scope for buffing them up a bit. Some of the threads and such like, not best impressed, but they're okay. That power button, uh, I think that comes under the heading of one of those things. The airflow, very good indeed. Uh, I'm a happy man, and here's the thing. There's absolutely nothing about this case that makes me go, oh no, that's a no-no. I know some of you, for example, insist on having an optical drive. You've got two of them, or you can take them out, your choice. Plenty of drive bays, or you can take them out. Fan mounts, galore. Radiator mounts, galore. Quiet, yes. The only thing with this case uh, is it doesn't have a window, and I, I'm assuming there's going to be a windowed version. There usually is. So if that's the thing, I, I very much uh, imagine you're going to be okay in time. So possibly a power supply cover. <sighs> that seems like a very minor um, thing to point my finger at. Other than that, the F51, it's good work. Uh, and I'm very pleased indeed that we had a look at um, Thermaltake's liquid cooling systems. That was interesting as well. So this is Leo Wardock for Kit Guru.